Hi, guys. Um, this is my interpretation of the visions of the future. So uh, I, I just find that the future is not what it used to be. I don't know if you feel the same. Um, so as mentioned, my name is Carly DeFilippo. I am uh, someone who actually can see the future, believe it or not. Uh, in my personal life, I consult tarot, I read my daily horoscope, I am constantly looking at the moon phases. Maybe some of you are like me. Um, so personally, I see the future in that way. Professionally, as a partnerships director of Weno, I get to see the future of our company. Um, so I get to work with our clients. I am the first line of contact. I work with Hallie to figure out if they're a right match. And then ultimately, I get to shape the projects that we do in the future of our studio. So that's pretty freaking exciting. Um, and all the while, <laughs> trying not to fuck it up, uh, as my Shiro RuPaul says. And ultimately, you know, looking towards the future is great. And, and I think that intrinsically we're all also looking to the past. And as Joe mentioned, it's January 17th, but you know, we might still be in that mode. We're in that mode of the ritual of looking back and kind of taking stock on the, li the life we've led in the past year uh, in our annual ritual, like I like to call it, of self-improvement. Um, so I found myself when I was like, holy shit, this talk is coming, uh, thinking about what it is that I did last year, thinking warmly on what I was able to accomplish, uh, thinking wistfully upon the things that I didn't accomplish, and longingly at, you know, ultimately what it is I want from, from 2019 and, and the future. And I started to wonder, like... <laughs> Why am I seeing all this shit on Instagram? Why do we all think it's going to be a new year, new us? And why do we fail? Um, so I'm just curious. You may, like, did you do one of these? Raise your hand if you posted an Instagram story with your resolution. Oh, now you, I saw you. You were all okay. So you're hiding, but I know you did it. And ultimately, it like really motivated me in the topic for this conversation because I just thought like this is an intrinsic human shared experience. And uh, we all know that 88% or most of us are going to fail at those resolutions. So I wanted to dig in to why I feel like this running hot dog. And maybe you wonder why too. Um, why is it that we fail? Why is it that we are consistently setting ourselves up um, and, and, and letting ourselves down? So really it's new year, same old me. And I wanted to understand why that was. Um, so firstly, I was inspired by this shared human experience. My job is really about people, and I wanted to understand, like, what's the motivating thing inside that, that wants us to get better? And I think it's super inspiring. We want to leave, lead healthier lives. We want to, you know, have more friends or lose weight. And those are all great things, and I, I want to see more of us, yourselves included, and selfishly me, uh, actually accomplishing those goals. So I set out to understand, you know, what it is that we can do, like what's the science behind it and how can we actually get this shit done. So uh, before I was a production, or before I was a partnerships director at when I was actually a producer. So Gantt charts are my life and they still remain my life. And I spend every single day uh, at work and sometimes Saturdays and Sundays thinking about how to execute against the challenges that other people put before myself and before Weno. Uh, so I decided we're going to take this thing like a project and we're going to ship it and the product is me. So phase one, uh, discovery and research and this kind of like outlines the things I'm going to talk to you about. So really original. You guys may have heard of this before. So ultimately, I wanted to look into why these things are happening. Uh, and I, I found a couple of things. Number one, uh, we suck at willpower. And it's, it's not your fault. It's your brain's fault. It's your prefrontal cor cortex's fault. It's a small area of our brain. It's responsible for our willpower. But it's also responsible for like, how do I get from there to there? What did I do yesterday? What's two plus two? So it's a pretty busy area of our brain uh, and it's doing a lot for us. So one way we can illustrate like why we suck at willpower and there's many studies that show it, like we can imagine this side of the room. If I tell you, you're gonna remember a two digit number. This side of the room is gonna remember a seven digit number. And if I asked you all to file out towards the bar, 
and there was some treats waiting for you at the bar, the people that were just holding that two-digit number in their mind are gonna choose the healthier choice at the bar. The cognitive load of the people that are choosing that seven-digit number are gonna choose the shittier choice. Um, our brains just can't even handle five more digits, uh, and really that cognitive load confuses our prefrontal, prefrontal cortex, uh, and we're just gonna choose chocolate cake over a fruit salad, let's say. Um, so in real life, <laughs> that's me. Uh, I think this comes to life in many ways, right? So we all have, a have had a stressful day at work uh, or a challenging whatever, and we make decisions that don't make sense. We make decisions that aren't good for us, like eating pizza in bed or eating a pint of Three Twins ice cream after a challenging day. Uh, it's just because we're spent. And if we think about our brain like a muscle, um, one that will give out to failure, I think that we can better understand like why this happens and that we're essentially taxing that muscle quite a bit. Um, so that's number one. Number two, our willpower, if we continue to think about it like a muscle, it's operating on a budget. Um, so if we go to achieve all the things, we're probably gonna achieve none. Um, so ultimately, we have to be careful just like you know, our attention budget, or if you read the wonderful book, The Art of Not Giving a Fuck, your fuck budget, be careful with those things. Um, you know, apply them to things that matter to you so you don't waste them on shit that doesn't. Um, so there's also a scientific consideration here. Like, we, as a, as a human group, tend to make commitments or resolutions around weight loss. Weight loss means less energy going into our mouth. If you also have a goal of working out more and quitting smoking or getting promoted or whatever your resolution is, you're actually depriving yourself of the energy that you need to make those decisions and for those to be more powerful. Um, so typically we're depriving our bodies of that energy and, and wondering why uh, we suck at achieving all the things we want to achieve. So don't juggle it all um, and be kind to yourself if you find yourself failing. I think it's really important to just know that you're not the only one that can't juggle three pumpkins like Boo Boo here. Um, and number three, I think that you know we are constantly making these resolutions that make sense to other people. Like, why is weight loss a popular one? Maybe it doesn't matter to any of us. Um, so we need to find that internal investment and external accountability, uh, and ultimately, you know, find what matters to us and set out to achieve it. So. I'm assuming many of you are designers in the room, and if you think about it, like hopefully you enjoy the process of creating uh, as much as you enjoy the outcome, and we kind of want to tackle our goals in that same way. Um, picking something that matters to you is going to be a lot easier to stick to. Uh, and then as a matter of accountability, uh, those Instagram posts are nice. Uh, no one's going to remember what the hell you said or hold you accountable to actually achieving those things, and so here's a real accountability moment happening uh, on a mountaintop in the sunset, and it's quite inspirational. And ultimately, just simply making that commitment to someone else makes you 65% more likely to achieve your goal. And if you set an accountability appointment with that person, let's say like a trainer, I see a trainer three times a week, if you're paying someone money to show up at a certain amount of time, like a certain time and help you, you're 95% more likely. You don't have to pay them, but just show up. Uh, and you're way more likely to achieve that goal. So uh, that's our discovery and research phase. We understand the science of why we, we suck at this stuff, and uh, now we can try to think about how to be better. So practice makes perfect uh, with the willpower problem. There's not much we can do. Like We can't grow the prefrontal cor cortex. We can just make it stronger. So. Daily practices like meditation um, will definitely help with this. Uh, there's also another study that shows if you just focus on your posture, uh, you can actually help yourself commit to other things. So simple, simple Simon here and practice makes perfect. Um, so just recognizing that you're on a path here is, is super helpful and just knowing like, let's just keep reminding yourself to stay on that path. Um, secondly, the overcommission thing. Uh, it's something that we all do, and I think it's important to recognize that's our tendency, right? It's January, I'm gonna do all this shit, I'm gonna lose the weight and quit my job and get a new boyfriend, whatever. Um, so <laughs> let's just kind of like take it back here and pull that all into essentially small bites. 
uh, make it a little bit more easy to consume that information and to segment your goals into what I would like to call micro commitments. This is essentially hacking your brain. Um, your brain is really powerful and it's able to take on small commitments in so much that those commitments don't scare the shit out of it. So if you take those things and you ask small and gentle questions to yourself around what's the micro commitment that's gonna get me there, I got to the gym one time a week, maybe next week I'll get there two times, that's gonna be a more palatable option for your brain. Um, and ultimately, lastly, I can't decide, am I clicking, am I, I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> accountability. I think firstly, understand what's important to you. Huge, huge uh, thing that we need to do. And just align to what matters to you, not what matters to the external world. Um, and, and really just decide what it is that, that's important. And then, then externalize it. Then it is important to share it with people. Um, maybe sharing your goals in front of a room of 300 strangers is a good idea. Um, so that's essentially what I'm going to do, is engage in a little bit of power of social expectation. And hopefully, by sharing my goals with you, I will be more successful in actually doing them, meeting them this year. Uh, so maybe you guys have heard of a post-mortem. Um, at Weno, we think that's kind of a shitty thing, but ultimately we call it like a, a retro or whatever, but kicking the corpse was a funny thing to say. So uh, it's really important to think about what happened in 2018 before you jump ahead to thinking about what you want to happen in 2019. Um, so I broke this up into a couple of areas. So what went well, what didn't go well? Um, and like Marie Kondo, it was like way too much to absorb all at once. So I, I set it into three areas. So home and social, self, which includes my mind and my body, and work. Um, you don't have to do these segmentations. In fact, I recommend that you figure out what, what hap works for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and share some very personal things with you and uh, help me not be scared. So uh, in my home and social life, I was really proud to have kept alive some house plants. I don't know if there's any of you out there that also suck at that. Um, my sister moved to Truckee. I've been in the city for 13 years, and even though I have a car, I'm just like very much a city folk, so I was really happy to have that balance. Um, I framed a handful of art pieces that were just like sitting around in weird, dusty corners of my house, and it made things feel really nice. Um, and I also went to my first NHL, NBA, and NFL games. And like, I know I look really super girly, but I'm kind of a tomboy and this was huge for me. Um, in my self like evaluation, I determined that I was super proud that I did my first powerlifting competition. I actually deadlifted 300 pounds. I don't know if any of you guys know how much that, it hurt. <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> Uh, I should have a video of it. I actually sniffed a smelling salt before, which I think is the only reason why I actually did it, but whatever. Um, everyone else was doing it, so I was like, fuck it, I'm doing it. Um, I played on a team, uh, a team sport, so I play <laughs> on the softball league where we consistently lose every single game of every single season. And, <laughs> oh God, our pitcher's name is Bill Baker, and he's like 79 years old, and I play as the catcher sometimes, and I like get really anxious because I can't, I don't have a good throwing hand, and he has to like lean down to pick up the <laughs> softball, and it's just like torture. So go Nagas, we're great. Um, in my mind, I, I really enjoyed, and I, I felt like it was a huge cultivator that I was able to travel more. Thanks, Hallie, I got to go to Iceland a couple times. Uh, I joined a book club. I don't think that was super successful, but I joined it, and then I picked up a general interest in, in mindfulness and presence. That also wasn't super successful. Um, at work, I got promoted into a role that shifted my career. So I mentioned I was a producer. Um, that was great, I think, Hallie saw something in me that I didn't see, and I'm certainly not a saleswoman, but I do enjoy talking to strangers, so this is great. Um, and I joined the Wing SF chapter, which I think was like a hugely important, I was just so glad to see it open up in such an important community here. Um, really proud to have done that. So that was what went well. Um, some things didn't go so great. <laughs> You'll notice this list is longer. I'm tough on myself. Um, so ultimately at home, I felt like I was consistently cleaning shit up and like never actually doing it and never feeling at home. I have a living room filled with instruments that I don't play. So if any of you have been to my house and the people in the front row, 
It's just for show. I don't play them. Um, my husband, who's here, and I keep flirting with the idea of home ownership, but I just keep eating out and like door dashing every night, so that's not going to work. Um, and I didn't see a lot of my friends, and I didn't catch any t-shirts at those professional sports games, which was a real bummer for me. Um, from a self perspective, like uh, even though I did that 300 pound deadlift, that's great, but I didn't really meet my weight and loss, ma loss maintenance goals. I didn't run pretty much at all. I didn't eat as well as I should have, and I drank pretty much every weekend, so <laughs> sorry. Um, in my mind, like work stress, although things are great, work stress was like a huge compounding uh, challenge for me. And uh, I also kind of went through a personal experience that was hugely challenging. Um, so in late 2017, I had an ectopic pregnancy, which resulted in pregnancy loss. And as someone who's planned out and essentially achieved everything I've ever set out for, it was a huge challenge and felt like a failure personally. Um, so that was tough. And I didn't stick to the mindfulness practice, which contributed to a lot of the other problems. Um, at work, although we did great, and like, you know, everyone speaks so highly of Weno, I think I want to push more. I always want more for us. I think that we did great with our existing clients and the people that are coming to us, but I want to go out uh, and land a dream client. So we did this exercise where we pulled all of the designers and developers at Weno, and we were like, who do you want to work for? What are the kind of projects that you're interested in? And I just didn't happen to land those. So that's a huge commitment um, that I want to make again. And I also just felt like I didn't get to mentor anyone, which is a huge thing for me as well. So whew, that was hard. Um, things could have gone better. So. Cool, we got all out there, we kicked the corpse, we know what went well, we know what didn't go well. And I wanted to essentially, before I thought about what happens in 2019, I wanted to set some guiding principles. And I suggest that you do this too, although I got a little lazy and I stole some from Weno. Um, so we have six guiding principles at Weno. They're what's in the bold and mine is like the interpretation. So feel free to steal these. They're actually great values. They have nothing to do with work or design. They have everything to do with being a good human. Um, so personally, I feel uh, value feeling part of something larger than myself. This is a huge part of that. So thank you for being here. Um, I value honest communication and, and honoring my thoughts and feelings. I value doing things that challenge me, like seeing if we can get Miss Apple here into the square hole. And like, my, this is my first public speaking engagement, so that's also that. Um, I value leveling up and bringing something unexpected to the table. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard what bring the chocolate means, it essentially is just like, exceed expectation. So we had this intern, turned designer, turned world traveler by the name of Robin uh, at Weno, and he used to say, if a client asks you for a cup of coffee, bring them that cup of coffee, uh, but also bring the chocolate. So know someone well enough to know what it is they need and not just what they're, they're asking for. I value being in service of others. I'm the dog at the top. And I also honor my power, getting back to my tarot and horoscope and moon phase things. Uh, I honor the power I have to manifest and I'm unashamed of what makes me feel good. So I'm the girl on the flamingo. Whew, okay, cool. So science, what should we do? What went wrong with my life? What do I care about? Now it's time to commit. And fuck a resolution, guys. Like resolutions are dumb. We're making commitments here and that's what we're about to do. So. These are essentially the commitments that I made for 2019 based on what happened in 2018 and what's important to me today. So I won't touch on all of these, um, but seriously, guys, I'm going to catch a t-shirt from a Canon this year. That's number one from Home and Social. Uh, I'm going to commit to doing another weightlifting competition. It made me feel powerful. And to all the women out here that think that weightlifting is not for you, it is. Just try it. It's fucking fantastic. Um, I'm going to run. I'm going to commit to some family planning exercises and, and take it you know, seriously and hopefully get pregnant. I'm going to book my next vacation. I'm going to recommit to that mindfulness practice. And I'm going to become a mentor and bring in more dream clients. But that's like a lot. And that feels like, whew, that's pretty weighty. Um, and it also doesn't have any quantification. So I would say 
add some quantification to your goals. Just saying you're gonna run more means you can let yourself down and there's gonna be zero consequences. So here I kind of just applied some of those ideas, like how many times should I do the thing? When should I do the thing? Um, also very important, I noted here that I would like to become pregnant with one child. We are here in San Francisco. I do not want two. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So these are some of the quantifications. And again, I think this is how we really are gonna start to track against our goals and, and see how we do with them. Um, and then, all right, that's the whole year. What the hell am I gonna do tomorrow? So I kind of set up what's immediate and what should happen in January and with those quantifications. Um, that's all great too, but in kind of keeping with the scientific stuff that we talked about earlier, I thought, you know, what are some contextual cues that I can add? So something I do every day is I have coffee. Um, so can I add a contextual cue essentially to make some of these more challenging goals sticky? Um, so can I meditate after coffee? I feel like there's a, you know, I, I told this to Hallie earlier today and he was like, you really shouldn't meditate after your coffee, but I think <laughs> do what feels right to you. No one can tell you what your contextual cues are. You decide what they are. Um, and then after meditating on Sundays, I'm gonna run for a mile maybe. Um, and then in addition, like this isn't just promise land. This isn't just an Instagram post, people. We need some rewards and consequences. Um, so in addition to understanding what your values are, understand what your motivators are. For me, it's massage and donuts. For you, I don't know. Um, but essentially, I just applied some rewards and consequences to the goals that I have in order to help me achieve them. And what I will say is there's inherent consequences and inherent rewards in just meeting your goals and feeling good about doing that. So don't forget that and pat yourself on the back when you, when you get there. Last but not least, we all need an accountability buddy. So here is what I'd like to ask, is for you all to be my accountability buddy. Uh, essentially, I put these goals in front of you and just by the simple form of saying them to you, like I mentioned, I'm 65% more likely to achieve them. Uh, and, and honestly, like, I just want you all to go out and do the same. I don't care if you do it this way. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I just kind of took a project plan, copied it and applied it. Um, but I would just suggest go out there, make your goals, find your accountability buddies, make those commitments. And I really wish you all well in 2019. And I, and I hope that we can achieve your goals and you can achieve your goals. Uh, and for any of you who out there are also excited about potentially catching a t-shirt from a t-shirt cannon, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> All right, who wants a t-shirt? <laughs> nice. Okay, we're gonna put a little more power in the next one. I feel like there's gonna be more power behind us. Maybe come over here. Just another normal night. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll fire it up randomly later. Start shooting. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, nice. And I'm going to figure out the last one. In a second. Cool. Thank you, Carly. That was awesome.